As early as 2020, you may be able to get internet from SpaceX, but how will it actually work? Hi, I'm Ben Sullen, the host of Teslanomics, and today we're gonna to take a look at SpaceX delivering worldwide high-speed internet from space. Yep, that's right, from space. Back in November of 2016, SpaceX announced their plan to launch over 4,000 satellites into low Earth orbit, built with the purpose of providing high-speed internet to the US and other countries. The problem they believe they will solve is bringing reliable high-speed internet to hard-to-reach customers, such as those in rural areas. In May of 2017, Patricia Cooper, the head of this program for SpaceX, testified in front of the Committee on Commerce, Science, and Technology for the United States and laid out their goals. In her statement, she said, according to the FCC, 34 million Americans lack access to 25 megabits per second broadband service, and 47% of the nation's students lack the connectivity to meet the FCC's short-term goal of 100 megabits per 1,000 students and staff. As the FCC has noted, there continues to be a significant disparity of access to advanced telecommunications capability across America, with more than 39% of Americans living in rural areas lacking access to advanced telecommunications capability, as compared to 4% of Americans living in urban areas and approximately 41% of Americans living on tribal lands lacking access to advanced telecommunications capability. While more than 23 million Americans living in rural areas account for the majority of those who lack access, nearly 10 million Americans living in non-rural areas also lack basic access to high-speed internet service. SpaceX is at a real advantage here since they have more practice launching rockets and then landing them back on Earth, significantly reducing the cost of putting these satellites in space. The idea is that these satellites will orbit around 1200 kilometers above Earth's surface, and down here, all you'll need is a satellite dish to receive high-speed internet. To give you a point of reference, Hughes Satellite Internet Fleet, which is the current largest provider of satellite internet service, orbits around 35,000 kilometers. So by designing their satellites better and placing them closer to Earth, SpaceX hopes to provide high-speed internet that is compelling to everyone. The initial plans from SpaceX appear to be focused on the United States. However, they'll obviously be able to expand to other countries as they grow their satellite constellation. In my mind, that is where the biggest opportunity really lies for them. Pricing for the service, known as Starlink, hasn't been announced yet. But if we take a look at Hughes Satellite for a point of reference, we find that they offer several plans based on how much data you use. Their most popular plan gives you around 20 gigabytes worth of data per month for just under $70. They report to offer speeds of 25 megabits per second download and 3 megabits per second upload, which aren't really that bad. That's pretty good. Now that is about what I get on my cell phone provider living here in San Diego, a relatively urban city. However, if you wanna compare that to what I get from my local ISP, it doesn't even come close. If you live in an urban area with cable or fiber internet, it's not likely that this new service from SpaceX is gonna give you faster speeds. If, however, you live in an area where only DSL is available or you only have satellite internet available, then this could be a really compelling offer and give you a major performance boost. So with the details we have now, it doesn't appear that this program will really compete for yours or my internet service. So the question becomes, why do it? Well, in short, there's a lot of money on the table. While internet access has improved dramatically over the years, from around 10 million people back in 1993 when the internet was very nascent, it was very fledgling back then, to over 3.4 billion people as recent as 2016, you might be surprised to learn that the majority of people in the world still do not have access to the internet. This is known as the digital divide. And as the next 3 billion people come online throughout the world, companies are jockeying for a position to meet their needs. So regardless if you or I are considering signing up, it really doesn't matter because there are billions of people who this will really appeal to. And SpaceX isn't the only one looking to do this. Google has a project called Project Loon, which will put up weather balloons that float around for an extended period of time, providing internet service to these areas where you really just can't install this centralized infrastructure. There's not enough money there for it to make sense. Also, Facebook has a program where they're flying these solar powered drones well up, not low earth orbit, but really high over areas for extended period of time to provide internet as well. 
So they're not the only ones really trying to do this, but SpaceX does have an advantage here by being able to put them into low Earth orbit and having the ability to reduce the cost of launching them because of their technology where they can reuse the rockets. In their most recent statements about the program, SpaceX has said that they plan to launch two prototype satellites in the coming months. They also stated their plan is to launch the over 4,000 satellites in their constellation across the next five years, starting in 2019. Once they're able to get around 800 satellites into low Earth orbit, they said they'll be able to start offering service. If everything goes to plan, they could start offering this service in limited areas as early as 2020 to 2021, which is really just right around the corner. So I'm wondering what you guys think. Is this something you'd consider? Do you live in a rural area where internet is hard to come by? Surprisingly enough, the majority of the United States has really poor internet, even in urban areas. So depending on what speeds they're able to offer, this may be compelling to a lot more people than just those that are quote unquote hard to reach. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Each week, we take a look at the data behind Tesla to try to get a better understanding of how this company is impacting our world. We also have an email list at teslanomics.co you can get on, and everything will be sent direct to your inbox. You don't have to worry about YouTube or wherever else we're posting stuff. And lastly, remember, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next time.